some of uh, some of you will recall that when I made uh, comments when I was installed as president, that I got emotional uh, as I talked about how much I love Rotary. Uh, I've been able to remain stoic at every meeting since, but I will tell you today, all bets are off. So uh, if I if I get emotional, then please just bear with me. Um, on November 27th, 2020, I received the following message on a professional networking platform, LinkedIn. Hi, Ross. My name's Yana. I'm a business development manager, and I love growing my LinkedIn network by connecting with people behind the financial sector. Would be glad to join your network. I noticed that Yana and I had some mutual connections, so I accepted the invitation to connect. I could not have imagined that that would lead to a friendship, an improbable friendship that I now hold among my most cherished. Yana and I have a mutual curiosity and interest in people of other cultures, uh, and that led us to ask each other about where we live. Uh, Yana was interested to know that the Asheville area uh, has thousands of Ukrainians who have settled here. We're delighted to have two here with us today. Um, I was very interested and surprised to learn that Yana works with somebody that worked at the golf course, the Grove Park Inn. Um, our, uh, our communication evolved into recommendations of documentaries, music, and books. Uh, I was interested to learn that Yana's favorite book is To Kill a Mockingbird, which she has read many times. Uh, she, I think, was equally interested to learn that my female dog, Scout, is named for Atticus Finch's daughter. Over the past year, our communication has been marked quite frankly, frequently by words of care and encouragement, and we have both needed them. Let me give you a little bit of information about Yana before she speaks. Yana lives and works in, in Venezia, Ukraine. She is sales manager for Steel Kiwi Inc which is a software development company with offices in Ukraine, but clients around the world. Yana is a graduate of Venezia State Teacher Training University where she majored in languages and literature. Uh, Yana's learning did not stop there though. In the two years that I have known her, a little over two years that I have known her, she has studied German uh, and has also learned to drive a car and gotten her driver's license. So she is, a, like many of you, a learner for life. Yana loves reading, dancing, and spending time with family and friends. She adores animals and has two cats that she says are amazing. That tells you a little bit about Yana, but what will tell you volumes about Yana is her response when I asked her if she would stay in Ukraine after the invasion by Russia. And her response was sweetly and purely, my mother will not leave and I will not leave her. Yana, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Um, thank you, Ross. Um, hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you well. Thank you. You're good to start. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm Jana, and I'm proud to be Ukrainian to the bone. My family raised me in traditions of the good and beautiful. And I'm staying in Ukraine since day one after the start of full-scale war, with the hope that the sense of this good and beautiful I've been raised with will shine over my land once again. Thank you so much for having me today. And um, thank you for being not indifferent to the war since day one of Russian troops entering Ukraine in February, 2022. Well, yes, wow, uh, it does seem like, like it was yesterday. At times it is really hard to realize we are almost one year at a full scale war. And we are almost nine years at a hybrid war with a neighbor who knows no mercy, has no dignity, uses propaganda to spoil minds and is willing not only to grab more territories by destroying them, by making locals suffer losses, flee or die. This is um, 
the enemy who aims at erasing the Ukrainian identity and destroying our spirit and bringing us to our knees and making us refuse from our culture and embrace the attributes that are foreign to us. Those of, I guess, fear, egoism, cruelty, ruthlessness, and slavery as they see it. Since day one of Russian troops entering Ukraine in February, the Rotary Clubs in Europe were using their connections to gain access to a strategic railway hub that allowed them to shuttle critical supplies into Ukraine and help refugees get out. Thanks to Ross, uh, I know that Rotary Club Asheville has been using own experience to take action to provide aid to regions that supported Ukrainian refugees and others, people who were affected. The sense of gratitude is overwhelming. And uh, when Ross asked me if I'd be willing to join you today and share my own experience, as a Ukrainian, I knew that this is the least I could do. I said yes. And then, and then I had some time to sort of get ready. In this reality, there is nothing you can get ready to. Over and over again, I was thinking about the things I should say, the experience I need to share every new day here is just packed with news from the battlefields and the news doesn't make one feel happy. We lose friends, brothers, fathers and sons and our homes are being bombed. Many of our cities and villages no longer exist. And still, no matter what, uh, we find energy and we find time to volunteer. We donate, we oppose to propaganda. Ukrainians are now spread all over the world, but um, no matter where we are, we know what we are fighting for. We are fighting for the future, for the independence, the freedom and life. And we are fighting for all of the good and beautiful that we all have been taught since children. Every day here is full of uncertainty and doubts, but the first days were packed with fear. Fear was everywhere. Fear was in the air. And if fear were a solid substance, I guess I could cut it with knife. Is there a fear now? Yes, definitely. It'll be a totally crazy idea to say that we are fearless. Ukrainians are fearless. There is a lot less of fear today. The first days um, showed us that we can oppose by any means we have. There is um, a Ukrainian man who blocked a Russian military convoy with his own body. There is a Ukrainian woman who gave sunflower seeds to a Russian military man so he could put them in his own pocket and the seed would grow into a harvest when the military dies on our soil. There is a Ukrainian man who transported a bomb in his bare hands while holding a cigarette in his mouth. There is a Ukrainian granny who was spying on Russian troops in her occupied village and making notes, counting the number of tanks to share the number with Ukrainian soldiers. And there are also thousands and thousands of soldiers learning how to operate new weapons, not to show off on battlefields, but to protect every person who is standing behind their backs. There is siege of Mariupol, the attack on Snake Island, bombing of Mykolaiv, Kyiv, Kherson, Odessa, my native Vinitsa, 
Львів, Дніпро, Харків. The Bucha Massacre. Missile attacks. There are sirens that have become part of our lives. And there are church bells in regions where sirens aren't available. Every single morning here starts not with a cup of coffee, but with the news feeds, checking if your friends and family are safe in cities being bombed over the previous night. There is also unbelievable and explicit anger and a deep desire to fight back. To fight back not to conquer theirs, but to take back what belongs to us what is now destroyed and raised to the ground. People say that um, over a very short period, um, a very peaceful European country turned into a military state with a powerful army. That is true. But becoming a military state wasn't our choice. Our soldiers, our warriors and our heroes are guiding us today, day and night. And I guess that this world doesn't have the right word that could really express how thankful we are. Millions of Ukrainians today have developed into a powerful army of volunteers who donate, cook and transport. We are also the army of ordinary people like myself. We keep working to support the economy. And there is an army of electrical and utility workers who fix the bombed power system areas so people like I can have access to water and electricity to join you today. You'd be surprised, um, but this evil neighbor that we have made us stronger. Uh, war made us understand and cherish what we are fighting for. But the price we are paying is too high. The enemy made us fight on the battlefield and on the home front. I'm witnessing how my friends volunteer after their working hours or on a weekend. I'm witnessing how my colleagues donate deliver water, cook in charity centers. I'm witnessing how my bosses are looking for ways to transport computer hardware and important medical stuff from abroad to help the army. I was witnessing how during the very first weeks after February the 24th, the office that I love so much became a home to people from Kiev, Kharkiv, Mariupol, Berdyansk, and other cities. And we all, the whole country, are making plans how we are growing, how we are going to rebuild, regrow, and resurrect. I know that um, wise people usually say that this is what differs a strong man from a weak one. Strong people are planning all the time. And they are looking into the future, seeing this future very bright. I see ours bright. The victory is ours. It will take time. But um, with this inner power that we possess, and uh, with the help from our international friends, we will win. It's um, because we all have been taught of this good and beautiful. And the good always wins, doesn't it? Slava Ukraini. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you. I, uh, you may not have heard that, but one of our members just thank me for this program and, and uh, said how incredible it was. So I want to make sure you, you know that. Thank uh, you so much. We, uh, we end all of our meetings with a quote, and I selected this quote today with you in mind. 
Uh, I think it speaks to the inner strength that you talked about earlier. Uh, I think it also sent, uh, speaks to the message that you and other re Ukrainians are sending to Vladimir Putin. Um, and it is from a famous American named Frederick Douglass. And the quote is, the soul that is within me, no man can degrade. 